We're sitting with Sarah Dessen right now. Welcome, first of all, to Los Angeles Times Festival of Books and PBS. I'm so happy to be here. It's great to be here. You have two books coming out at the same day. Yes. One in paperback, one in hardcover. The, yes. the hardcover is St. Anything. Yes. A lot of excitement coming about that one. The other one is called The Moon and More. Right. And do you plan having two books come out at once? It keeps you very busy moving around? Well, I think they, they in, the, in the last couple of releases, they've decided to do them on the same day because I think it just, the idea is people are coming to the bookstores anyway so they can go ahead and grab the paperback of the previous book and then and that one as well. But, you know, it's, it, it is, it's sort of an embarrassment of riches. Yeah. You know, I was, I, I haven't been, I've been at home writing for the last couple of years and so I go from being very introverted to being very extroverted. Um, Quickly. <laughs> and you, it is embarrassment, embarrassment of riches is one way to put it. Twelve novels is another way. I yes. mean, you've been very successful. You have this huge fan base. And yet, you've talked about how this book, uh, when we were writing Saying Anything, you were writing a totally different book. Right. I was. I was working on a different book. I have a tendency to, I for every book that I've written, I have at least one book that didn't work. Um, and I have yet to figure out what I can do to stop that process from happening. Um, I recently, after I finished saying anything, I cleaned out my attic and I found 13 manuscripts that I had either started and finished and abandoned or finished ha abandoned halfway through. Um, so I had just done that another time before this one and I just decided that I, I was sure that my career was over because I tend to be very fatalistic and negative about stuff like that. So I was like, I'm not going to write again until I have an idea that is so fully formed and so ready to come that I just can't not write it. Um, and then I just sat and waited and I was terrified. And eventually this story bubbled up and uh, thank goodness for that. And here it is. So let's, let's, There's a couple of angles that we're going to talk about regarding that, but let's start with the first one about abandoning a project. I right. mean, something that you've spent an enormous amount of time on, um, all creative people understand you get emotionally invested in a project. It's your project. You're you're living and sleeping and breathing with it for, for months, if not longer, and and you decided to make the tough decision, to put it aside or to let it go or to just abandon it entirely. What made you certain that it was time to let go of this thing that had consumed you for so long? Right. Well, there were so many warning signs. I mean, in my gut, I can tell when a book is working and when it's not. I mean, writing is never like super easy for me. I don't sit down and the muse sings and ah, you know, it's always a struggle. But there's a difference between the day-to-day -day struggle of writing a novel and you know being so upset that you every time you sit down at your desk you have this feeling of dread. You know, you got to have a few good days peppered in there. Um, with this one, I. I just could feel that it wasn't working. I didn't have a full formed idea when I started, but I was like, never mind, I'll figure it out, you know. And I was I was breaking all of my own rules. I kept backtracking and starting from the beginning again and threading new things through. Every day I had an idea for something that was gonna change everything and make it better. And it just got to the point where I was just getting more and more desperate. And then I had this one day where I decided, okay, I need to put these two new characters at the beginning and thread them all the way back through. And I realized I was breathing so hard, I was like panting, you know, and I thought, stop. You know. Yeah, I knew. And um, I pushed back from my computer and I went over and said to my husband, I think I just abandoned my book. And he was like, good, you've been miserable. And I was like, what do I do if I don't write? He's like, you don't write. Just wait and see what happens. Yeah, it wasn't that there was another bright, shiny thing that took your attention no. away from it. No, and was I was nothing. terrified. It's so hard to not have something in progress because part of being a successful writer, I think, is being disciplined, writing every day. If I'm not writing every day, I don't feel like I'm a writer. Mm -hmm. I don't know what I am. So. Um, but I, there's a reason why a lot of those books didn't work. I think you have to be fallow. And I have a tendency to finish what, one book and think I need to rush into the next one. But you know, you, there's a reason for the seasons. You know, there's a reason that trees drop all their leaves and then are bare and then it comes back. You've got to fill yourself back up again. And it's taken me 12 books and almost 20 years to realize that, but I'm hoping I'll, I've well, learned it. You say it. that with such confidence now, but there was a point when you weren't writing when you were convinced it was done, that you were that you'd had a good run as a writer yes. after eleven books, and you were uh, apparently all finished, your career was done. Yes. Well, Where well, was that confidence at that moment? What well, happened to her? totally gone. You know, I only feel confident right now because I finished a book. <laughs> <laughs> but see, I haven't started the next one yet. Yeah. So wait until all this tour stuff is over. Wait until sort of early June when I sit down in front of my computer and I'm not writing. Um, the confidence is not there. And it's funny that this is my 12th book and I'm still terrified, even though I feel good about this book and I'm proud of it and it was a real labor of love. It never gets old, that nervousness. People think, oh, you, you sell a book, you get published and then you don't have to worry anymore, but that's not true. You know, there's reviewers and there's feedback from readers and then there's the pressure to deliver and do another one, especially in YA where there are so many people that are so prolific. Um, and I do a book every two years and I'm seen as slow, you know, whereas in adult fiction, that's that's fast. So it's just it's very relative. 
Um, so did you get support when you were like sitting there staring at your keyboard and nothing was coming out from your publisher? Or are they like, you know, looking at the watch, wondering what's they going on? They understood. I called both my editor and my agent and I was like, look, I'm setting aside this book and I don't know what's going to come next. And it wasn't the first time I've done it. And the one thing I had going for me is the two other times that I have been in this boat where I really set aside a book, a really good book is followed. So, um, so I knew that if I just hung in, hopefully, but I was like, maybe I'll go back to teaching. Maybe you're just not meant to be a young adult writer for more than 20 years. You know, maybe I've had my run and there are all these young Turks coming up behind me, you know, and YA is so different now. And, um, but you kind of just have to jump off that cliff and see what happens. You know? Know, the doubt is kind of part of the process. I'm fascinated by this, this idea that, um, as you face the unknown and you just are convinced, but that idea, that absolute fear that it's over is actually part of the creative process. But for you, like, tell me, because if there's a lot of people who may not be, your, they may not be authors, they may have other creative projects they're working on, that idea of getting to the breakthrough, right. of just showing up and getting there, um, even though you weren't sure, you still went through the process, something was pulling you forward, what right. was it? I think it was just a certain amount of faith and knowing that, you know, whatever was going to happen was going to happen and that the la the one thing I knew I didn't want to do was start another book and fail. Like that was the thing that held me. Like I had felt so bad the whole time I was writing that book. I never wanted to feel that way again, the one that I set aside. So I thought if, if it's, I have to feel that way or I don't write anymore, then I would rather not write anymore than have it be that miserable. Um, but it's, it's a total leap of faith. Writing is a leap of faith every day. Even when I'm writing a book that I feel good about, you know, I can sit down at the same time every day, same routine, eat the same two pieces of chocolate, you know, and have vastly different results. You just never know. And for someone like me, who is such a control freak, it's maddening, you know? I wish I could just, I should have gone into accounting or something that was like all numbers, you know, and forms and stuff, and you just, there, there's, no, there's no guesswork in it. It's just like numbers, and this leads to this, leads to this. But that's not where I ended up, yeah. so. Um, but I always tell people it's like taking a break is not a bad thing. I think when people, I get asked a lot about writer's block and it's okay to step back from something if it's not working. Often your brain will work it out, you know. I just had to sort of stop pushing and it's kind of like, I was, this is going to sound crazy, but you know, like I'm not a cat person, but I know a lot of people who have cats and you know, like if you want a cat to come out from under a couch, the worst thing you can do is like go under and grab the cat and it's you know, going to kill you. It's going to scratch you up. You have to be patient. You have to wait and eventually the cat will come out when it's ready. And that's sort of how I felt about this book. <laughs> this book was my cat under the couch, so to speak. And it so often happens when someone is struggling and waiting for the cat to come out from under the couch, that actual process wove its way into the character and the book itself. Can you talk a little bit about how that happened? Yeah, well, because I, I write every afternoon, so I felt very weird sitting at home not writing. I always feel like I left the iron on or I forgot to pick up my daughter from school like something's just not right um, so I started to think about you know in those sort of sad late afternoons um, about another girl and what reason she might have to be sad in the afternoon and Sydney sort of came you know her whole family sort of in flux and tradition her, her father just went I mean her brother just went off to jail she's alone in the house in the afternoons and she's just sitting there trying to fill this time until everyone comes home and it was just like I'm trying to fill this time um, and we kind of just got through it together, her and me. Um, but I, I think it's very, the neurosis is always in there. You know, I, I think, I, maybe I'm the only one that can see it, but I definitely will weave in what was going on with me into the book and what's happening. The other element is the YA audience itself is really supportive. Can you talk a little bit about, because it's such an explosive genre right, today. Right, And you've been around for a long time. I have. Uh, and you built a big base of followers who will cheer you on and you're very open on social media and things like that so like how did your own and, and talk to me first of all about the power of the YA audience right. for you and, and this, you know a group you've stuck with for a long time and also how they helped you through the whole process. Well I think YA readers are so they're so enthusiastic because often as teenagers you know as adults we are more you know we've read a lot of books and if we get excited about a book we're like this book is really good yay you should read it you know but teenagers they're connecting with books for the first time so they're just having that moment where they are reading something on the page that really hits home with them and that enthusiasm is really clear in the way that they react to us as authors and to the books you know I mean I have so many authors that I love but I have girls that come through my signing lines and they just burst into tears because they are associating me with the book and like what I made them feel is so powerful because it's like the first time that they've felt it. Um, and I felt another way to be really accountable to myself of 
I'm not going to start another book until I'm really convinced that it's going to be a good one, was to be very open about it. And also, I think it's a comfort to people that are writing. I mean, I can't tell you how many times that has been retweeted. My my picture of my 13 abandoned manuscripts, I laid them all out in my driveway with a sticky note on each of them with the narrator's name. And people just went crazy over it, you know, and all these writing sites picked it up like, look, Sarah Dessen has 13. And I was like, yeah. Because I, I want to be honest about it. I've always been honest with how hard writing is. I dislike it very much when writers act like it's so easy because it just makes me hate them, you know, because it's not easy for me. So that makes me feel like a hack, you know, if somebody is just drifting to the computer and the muse is singing and the words just flow and everything. I think it's a, it's a public service to other writers and um, to be honest about the struggle. Well, a couple things. Um, if you never want anyone to read those 13 manuscripts, better hide them or bring them or something. <laughs> Because some of them say, there's 13 manuscripts out there, and they're going to want to read them. Oh, uh, I had so many yeah. people say after that post, I would read all of these. I was yeah. like, no, you say that. but Because yeah. people are only used to reading the final version after my wonderful editor has you know, worked her magic on it. My That's drafts right. are not that nice. That's right. Well, the second thing is, as you're, as you're struggling with a, a book in the future, which will inevitably happen at some point, and you're questioning your raison d'etre, remember those people crying in that line I know. who moved I know. you so much and the 12 books that continue to move people every day with new readers and your long career which has yes. been really wonderful to watch i feel very lucky to have it well, we're lucky to have you today thank you so much for coming by and thank I you hope for you having a great me festival. Yeah. all right yeah. you too thank really you nice to meet you <laughs> thank you